Hello once again everyone, and welcome back to, uh, well, not a particular series. Today I'm going to be going over Angelo's system of bayonet, which is what my backsword and bayonet class has recently been going through. All this is going to be is just a general review of the exercises as he's laid it out. I'm not going to get into the full regimental practice, as that is its own deeper subject. That has actually been covered very well by uh, another fellow that I put a link to his videos in the description. He also goes through how it changes um, over the course of the eras of the regimental drill. But for now, we're just going to focus on the moves themselves and how you might practice them. So first and foremost, uh, I have a Mokuju trainer here, which is about the size of a brown vest with bayonet affixed. You will begin at your normal attention. From here, you will move to port arms. You may now charge the bayonet, which will be I'm going to shift my body over and lower the weapon. So my feet are at a right angle. I'll then move into the second position, also known as the guard. Now, the guard will look a little bit different depending upon which manual you're reading, but as for what Angela recommends, we're lowered and I'm in tight with my head lowered and the musket held very tight to my body. So from here, I have a series of points and guards that I will execute. For our first point, we're going to be at the level of a man, so my point is down. If I look to guard against cavalry, my point will raise, but for now, it's going to be down. And my very first point, you can do this with either a lunge or just an extension of the rear foot. I am going to extend up. I'm going to bring it into my shoulder and I'm also going to push my right shoulder forward. This is not to be thought of as taking aim. This is to be thought of as shooting this forward. Right? Hence why we're going with point. Now, at the same time, I'm going to straighten or lunge uh, with my back leg and I should end up like so. Nice and firm. My right shoulder is forward, it's locked into my body so that I, when I hit target, it's hitting with all of my force. Then I return to the second position. So, point, recover, point, recover, point, recover. Now from here, I'm going to move into a new guard. I'm going to raise the weapon up so that now I can thrust low. This is for either hitting people on the ground or going against people if you are standing above them. So for example, assaulting earthworks. For here, what's going to happen is, once again, I'm going to move into a very similar finishing position as I was before, but I'm going to need to spiral down into it. So I'm going to push my arms down until it locks against my body as I lean against my target. So here's that again. Pushing down and in. Down and in. I want to make sure that my elbow is coming down as it stays out. That'll put a lot of force against my shoulder. It has a tendency for it to pop out. I need to make sure that I'm bringing this in and almost couching it against my body. So from here, point, point, point. Now from here, I'm going to move up to high. So whereas before I was fighting a man, now I'm fighting a man on horseback, which is much taller than a lot of people give credit for. I mean, right now, for a man on horseback, for a horse of this, of this time, I would probably be thrusting at about his bottom rib right now. That's quite a distance to cover. But here is going to be exactly the same as extending in front. We're just now going to be extending on the high line. So I still push my shoulder forward and lock this into position before recovering back. Point, recover. Point, recover. Point, recover. Now from here, we're going to move into our next position. So we'll lower the tip back down. Now what's going to do is I'm going to shorten arms. So for here, I'm going to shift my weight a little more onto my back leg. And I'm also going to rest the barrel of the musket onto my arm. It's not dissimilar from the position of Schlüssel, if you're familiar with it from Meyer's uh, German longsword. My stock is held upward and behind me, and the whole weapon is parallel to the ground and in line with my body. I should not be profiling away, so if I face the camera, I am still relatively square. I'm not turning my back. The point of this is for when you need to thrust in a very low uh, distance. So for example, if someone is trying to grab uh, my bay, trying to grab hold, I pull it back so they can't get hold of it, and then I can thrust forward, or alternatively if I'm fighting in relatively close range. So from here, once again, we're going to be spiraling, so I'm going to push it forward and in as I bring that shoulder up. Point. Point. Overall, very fun. Now, our next point, you'll actually see a couple differences. So, Angelo describes we're now going to return all the way to high, but this time when we execute our point, it's going to be basically straight up. And this is called the lance point. Now, what the lance point is, as I demonstrated in front of me, you're going to take your left hand off, 
and you can put it onto um, your thigh. I usually, when I have my guys do this, I have them slap the thigh, just for a little bit of added uh, esprit de corps. But the point of this is, is that I'm going to extend my lead arm all the way out. Now, important thing about this is if you look, when I do this thrust, I am not turn. That actually shortens my reach. I am extending this shoulder forward while keeping this guy square. So Lance point, as for Angela, would be done upward and can be done for a couple different reasons. Really, the only situation in which I would want to do this is if it is too unsafe for me to get against my opponent. So for example, there's a depiction of a guy using the lance point against someone on cavalry, on, on horseback, who's trying to cut him in the lead hand. This obviously would make it so he has no lead hand to cut. Alternatively, uh, Angelo does discuss that usually the only situation you're going to do it at this level is if you're fighting someone and you are sure that you're going to get them with this thrust, because otherwise it's very easy for this to be knocked aside and you're in a very bad position. So, Angelo would have us do it up. I'll go ahead and do it that way. Lance point, 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 and I just snappily recover it back into my hand as soon as I may. You can also do this in front of you, it's the same exact idea. So, going through all these in the order I've just done, usually I like to do three thrusts from each, at which point you'll go ahead and about face. Now when I about face, I'm also going to change hands. So now I'm right foot forward, my left hand's on the trigger guard, and I have to do everything the other way around, which is very good practice, because you'll quickly find some asymmetry in the way you do things, but this situation could come up, and as such, you must be ready for it. But, otherwise, that's basically all we've been covering for now. There's a couple other things in there, but if you're currently looking for something to practice with the bayonet, this is excellent. Um, certainly, you can use you know, just a stick or what have you as a stand-in. Um, if you do choose to use a rifle that you possess, um, usually I, I hear a lot of people have Mosins lying around. In fact, the joke was made that probably buying a Mosin Nagant is cheaper than getting one of these trainers, especially here in the southeast, so, you know, that's probably true. Always make sure if you're going to do anything along those lines that you know exactly what you're stabbing at and that the weapon is unloaded. Never try to do this with ammunition in it. But otherwise, uh, hopefully that was quite interesting. And like I said, if you want to see how it kind of changes over time or see the full regimental um, orders and everything involved, I put a link in the description down below to a, uh, I believe he's a reenactor by trade, and he goes through a lot of really cool details there, as well as a lot of just other neat stuff about British Army. But otherwise, thank you very much. And we'll go over some other techniques another time.